In this video, I'll show you how to convert a stuffed animal to a light up kids activity timer using an Arduino. Simply bop it on the head to start the timer and the green LED turns on. After a set amount of time, the green LED turns off and the red LED turns on, indicating that the activity is over. The key to this project is a flexible force sensor hidden inside the stuffed animal. That's what lets you activate it with a soft push on the head instead of something harder and more clicky like a regular button. You can see I've had the circuit hidden behind the stuffed animal here, so let's take a closer look at how it works. Here we have the circuit just on a breadboard so we can see everything a little more clearly. I have two LEDs of different colors, each with a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. Those are connected to the Arduino's digital pins with male-to-male -male jumper wires. I also have the force sensor, which is connected in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor forming a circuit called a voltage divider. That allows us to measure the analog voltage output from this voltage divider circuit, which goes to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. We have to do that because the Arduino cannot measure changes in resistance directly, it can only measure voltage. We have a separate tutorial video all about these four sensors and how they work as part of our Arduino tutorial playlist linked in the description of this video. We'll take a more detailed look at the code in a minute, but the circuit works by waiting for a press on the force sensor that exceeds a certain threshold, at which point it lights up the green LED, waits for a predetermined amount of time, then after that time has elapsed, it lights up the red LED for a predetermined amount of time, then resets and waits for another press on the force sensor. To connect things to a stuffed animal, you can use male to female jumper wires, which have a pin on one end that plugs into the breadboard, and a hole on the other end that you can plug something like an LED or the pins of the force sensor into. So for example, I can plug one leg of the LED into this end of the jumper wire, and then the other end goes into the breadboard. Now this is easier than soldering because it does not require a soldering iron, but the connection is not as strong, so you might want to use a piece of tape to hold it on there so it doesn't wiggle and come loose when you move your project around. To mount the force sensor inside the stuffed animal, you can cut a small slit with scissors or with a hobby knife and then slide this circular part into that slit just below the surface and then again use male to female jumper wires to connect the pins of the force sensor to the breadboard. Let's switch over to Tinkercad Circuits, which is a free online Arduino simulator that lets us see the circuit in a little more detail and take a look at the code. First, we will review the circuit again. We have two LEDs, again, each with a current limiting 220 ohm resistor connected from the LED's negative side or cathode to ground, and then the positive side or anode of each LED is connected to one of the Arduino's digital pins. If you are just getting started out with Arduino and you don't know how to control LEDs yet, we have a video on that earlier in our Arduino tutorial series, which again, you can find linked in the description of this video. Next, we have the force sensor, and again, we have a longer video that's all about these force sensors, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but it has two pins in the breadboard. One of those pins goes to 5 volts from the Arduino. The other pin goes to one of the Arduino's analog input pins and is also connected in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor that goes to ground. And in this simulation, I just have everything connected directly on the breadboard, but again, if you were going to connect all of this to a stuffed animal, you would use those male to female jumper wires to extend the parts off the breadboard. Now let's take a look at the code line by line. Don't worry if this seems a little intimidating at first, you actually don't really need to edit much of this code unless you want to add more things to the project that we'll talk about later. So first we declare a bunch of variables for our LEDs and our sensor. We have a variable for the sensor pin, a variable for the sensor reading, and a variable for the sensor threshold. This is the value that we are going to wait for for the sensor reading to exceed that value before we start the timer and light the first LED. So this is another thing you can change depending on your force sensor and your stuffed animal. You might want to adjust this threshold up or down to change the sensitivity for how hard you need to press before you start the timer. After that, we declare two variables for the LED pins we are using. I am using pins eight and nine, but again, if you are adding more things to your project and you wanna use different pins, you can just change those variables in the code. 
Next, we declare variables for the delay times in minutes. Minutes as a unit of time makes a little more sense for humans when you're doing something like playing or cleaning or doing homework, but the Arduino delay command uses milliseconds, so we need to convert that time in minutes to time in milliseconds before using it with the delay command later. So that is what these two lines here do. You do not need to edit these. If you want to set a different delay time, for example, if you want the first delay to be 10 minutes instead of one minute, you would just change this line to a 10, and you don't need to edit these two equations. Next, in our setup function, we set the two LED pins as outputs using the pin mode command, and we initialize serial communication, which is going to let us print the sensor reading out to the serial monitor. Then, in our loop function, we have a while loop that is going to basically make the code wait or get stuck until the sensor reading exceeds the threshold variable that we defined. So while the sensor reading is less than this threshold or the sensor is not being pushed on hard enough to exceed that threshold, the code is just going to get stuck in this loop. It's going to take a new sensor reading and it's going to print that sensor reading out to the serial monitor so you can see it, but it won't exit this loop until the sensor reading exceeds that threshold. So the LEDs will not turn on and the timer will not start until you have pressed the sensor hard enough. And we'll talk in a minute about how you can use this printout to calibrate your sensor and change that value. After the code has exited that loop, it will then turn the first LED on. We'll making sure the second LED is off and wait for that first delay that you set, but remember the delay command uses milliseconds, so we are using the milliseconds version of the variable here and not the version in minutes or else this delay would just be very, very fast, so fast that you would barely even be able to notice it. After that delay, we switch the LEDs, we turn the first LED off and turn the second LED on and then wait for our second delay, again making sure we use the milliseconds version of that variable because, for example, if you told this to only wait for 10 and you thought that meant 10 minutes, the Arduino would interpret that as 10 milliseconds or only 10 thousandths of a second, which would be so fast that you wouldn't notice. So this delay variable has to be in milliseconds and not minutes. After that delay, we then turn both of the LEDs off. We take a new sensor reading and go back to the top of our loop function where we again will get stuck in this while loop until we push on the sensor hard enough to start the whole process over. If I start the simulation, we can see the sensor reading printing out here to the serial monitor. And the Tinkercad simulator lets me drag a slider to simulate pushing on this force sensor. So we can see as I increase that slider, this number starts to go up, but it has not yet exceeded the threshold of 500 that I set here. So the code is currently still stuck in this loop and the LED has not turned on yet. As I continue to increase the slider, we will see this sensor value go up and then once it goes over 500, we can see that the green LED turned on. The code has now exited this loop. It's turned that first LED on and it is now waiting in this delay command. I have that set to 10 whole minutes, so we're not gonna sit here and watch the whole thing, but once it exits that delay, it would then switch the LEDs, wait for the second delay, and then again, go back to the top of the loop and wait for another press on the force sensor. Now, if you need the code or a parts list, you can find a link to that Tinkercad circuit and written instructions on our website with a materials list all in the description of this video. But something you could, should consider, especially if you are doing this for a science or engineering project for your school, is what you can add to the circuit. You don't want to just copy the exact directions from our website without giving it your own twist or addition. And we have lots of other Arduino tutorials for different things you could add to your circuit to customize it. For example, you could add more LEDs. You could add a yellow LED as a warning in between the green and red LEDs to indicate that the activity is almost over. You could add a buzzer as an audible warning for people who aren't looking at the timer. That could be very useful in something like a crowded classroom. Or you could even add motors to animate your stuffed animal or maybe make the arms move or flap or something to help get people's attention. So there are lots of ways you can customize your project. And again, you can find tutorials for all of those individual parts in our Arduino playlist linked in the description of this video. You can also find many other cool science projects you can do with an Arduino on our YouTube channel. And for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out our website, www.
www.sciencebuddies.org.